YouTube Final Community, Foo Fighters fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins and we're here today to talk about the brand new release from Foo Fighters, Medicine at Midnight, their 10th release, celebrating their 25th anniversary as a band. Can you believe 25 years? How did that happen? Anyways, I was really excited for this album to come out after hearing Shame Shame performed on SNL, a song that caught me completely off guard because Dave's got these kind of calm vocals and the verses, the, the riff that lends itself to empty space, the atmosphere the song created totally caught me off guard. It was something that I haven't really heard from them before, and I've been a fan since Breakout and Learn to Fly, all that late 90s stuff, My Hero, whenever those songs came out. So I've been following this band for a long time, so to hear something different, but still kind of Foo Fighters, was very interesting. And digging into this album deeper, you know, hearing about the stories of them recording this in this kind of creepy old haunted house where they'd come back the next day and tracks that they had recorded were gone. Things that they did not record were there instead. So it sounds like a creepy atmosphere was kind of around this album, but a lot of people have called it their party album. I can kind of see that. I say it's more of a groovy album. I don't think it's a party. I mean, there are moments that would definitely be like upbeat rock and roll party time, jump around. But for me, I get more of a groovier atmosphere on this thing. I'm getting a real early 70s, mid 70s rock and roll vibe from this thing, which might not be what they were going for, but that's how I kind of perceive it. I really enjoy this album. It's the first album from them in a long time. Not that they've made bad albums, but the first one since Wasting Light, which I think was like 10 years ago now, that's really caught my attention to being like, wow, what is that? What's going on here? That's different. That's kind of my takeaway from this album, and I'm really glad they made it. I'm really glad they did something different. And even Dave was like, let's just do it. Let's do something different, because why not? And I completely, 100% agree. The album opens up with Making a Fire, which to me has a very Mooney Suzuki, alive and amplified sound. I was totally ready for Sammy James Jr. to come in and go, whoa, plug me in and turn me on, but it didn't happen. But I really love the background vocals, the the, um, the background vocals on this album, the female group vocals, are fantastic and lend themselves so well to that rock and roll sound that they're doing on this record. Really digging that. But the groove on this track in particular is excellent, expertly played. Uh, Dave's voice has never changed. It still sounds exactly the same. <laughs> but it sounds like it's ready for 70s rock radio, and I'm all for that. You know, they all grew up with that stuff. That's their... DNA at this point was the stuff they heard when they were growing up in the 70s and 80s. That's their livelihood. That's the music they knew. So to have it injected into their stuff, of course it's going to happen. And then Shame Shame, the second song on here, the first single, was, like I said earlier, a track that really opened my mind to what this group can do. Because not saying all of their albums sound the same, but they kind of accomplished the same mission. And again, that's not a detractor or an insult in any sort of way. You know, they know what they do and they do it well. But to hear them do something completely different with these different textures and the atmosphere, and like I said, Dave's calm verse delivery, but then picking it up for the choruses, I just like the, uh, the dynamics on this track. The textures they play with really capture your attention. And that riff, dun, 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 so cool. Really digging that one. Cloud Spotter, this is a real nice loose riff, but the drum production on this is super tight. Coming off of Shame Shame, which is a big open airy sound of the drums, this one is the complete opposite. Where they, it sounds like they were recorded in a closet, but I love that feel. Cowbell or whatever kind of bell sounds are happening are a great touch. Big rock and chorus, the bridge rips you apart. It's just a punchy rock and roll song. Waiting on a War is a track that you think you know what's going to happen, but happily it changes course and the song grows and builds before it ends into a big rock and roll freak out, which works really well for the construction of the song to blend itself with the lyrical content. You know, it's a song about finding yourself and I think being prepared for the world and hearing it go from this acoustic ballad to become this fast paced rock and roll song. I think it's gonna work really well live too. Um, just a really cool rock and blast at the end. Side one ends with Medicine at Midnight, the title track, and I really, dig this song. It is funky and fun. It barely sounds like Dave vocally at first, but then it kicks in to sound more and more like him. But that catchy sly vocal delivery bit before it jumps full on into the chorus, it sounds like if the Foo Fighters were a 70s rock band. I am 100% on board. I love that new sound on this album. 
and this song in particular, I'm glad they named the album after this one, but that solo, that Stevie Ray Vaughan-ish solo that uh, Chris was talking about performing on this song really lends itself well too. It's got a nice bluesy, rich, robust texture to it that I also just really dig. But it, it's also fitting that they called it Medicine at Midnight because I did see an interview where Dave mentioned uh, they wanted to call it Love Dies Young at first, which was the last song on the album. But he thought it was fitting with the way the world is right now because, you know, midnight is appropriate because it's, you know, the end of the day, the start of the new day. You get to the next day, you keep trying to keep going, and medicine, obviously, is what's going to help you. So it's kind of like, here's your, here's your music medicine to get to the next day. Like, we're going to be all right. It's going to get better at some point. But I love the feeling on that song. Side B opens up with No Son of Mine which is the most seek and destroy moment that I've heard them do in a very long time. There's moments where Dave vocally sounds like James Zetfield, and it's so cool, but this song just kicks your head off. I mean, it is so upbeat and rocking and fast-paced and just in your face. This one doesn't sound like a party song to me. This one just sounds like balls-to-the-wall rock and roll anthem, man. It sounds like Rope off of Wasting Light. I'm getting that kind of riff rock vibe from that, but... They're just having a lot of fun here. And I like having the background vocals also on this moment too, where even when things get super heavy, you've got that background vocal going on. It just blends so well and it, it continues that feel of a new Foo Fighters sound. So I'm really enjoying that. And that solo was straight up awesome. It's just a great track. I'm glad this was a single. Holding Poison is the next track on here. And to me, this is the most Foo Fighters sounding song on the album. It sounds like classic Foo Fighters. To me, this song sounds like it could have been on their first album. It's got nice splashy cymbals, uh, more descending riffs on the guitars, and I really like how it kind of harkens back to the older sound. So you get a little bit of a blend of the old Foo's with the new Foo's. Chasing Birds is a really wonderful song and kind of a nice break from the heavy rock riffs. It's gentle and it's acoustic and the really tight production is a nice complement to the big open production that the rest of the album mostly has. But the bass on this one from Nate is just smooth and crisp and it pops up just in the right place. It's a perfect addition. He's an incredible bass player. It's a reflective song and it's just it's nice to have a moment like that on the album. It's it's good to take a breath. <laughs> like I mean I'm all I'm all for albums that kind of go full on the whole way through. But it's also nice. I like hearing the Foo Fighters do some more low, mellow stuff every once in a while. And that one fits the bill really well. And then Love Dies Young is actually kind of an upbeat pop rock song. This is definitely the one that they would have said, yeah, that's our party song. The upbeat hi-hats, the jangly guitar riff, it definitely sounds something that's ready for radio. It would not surprise me if this was a single. It's upbeat, but it knows when to bring the rock at the same time. So it's not completely just, you know pop rock it's got its moments of being a little bit heavier but i really do love this album i was before shame shame came out i knew that they were taking a break and i wasn't sure what they were up to but oh i knew that they were planning the 25th anniversary stuff but there's gonna be a tour they're gonna do the van tour as they called it and go to all the places they played on their first tour cool idea and then everything fell apart because of covid obviously and every band stopped doing what they were doing but this was a really welcome surprise i kind of forgot it was coming out and then it landed and uh, this is the limited edition blue vinyl for indie record stores. So it's only available at the store. And the blue is just wonderful. I gotta show you what this looks like. I mean, look, this is, it, I hope it shows up on, on camera. But it is just a really cool, like, ocean blue. And the labels are two different colors. You get more of a pink one on side A and like a denim blue on side B but they did such a sharp job with that and you get uh, you know a plain white inner sleeve as well as a lyric sheet so you can read along with the words and you also get a real inner sleeve if you want to use this so it's got more of the cover artwork on it and then some shots of the guys in the back one thing I also want to show while I've got you here, is the Target version, which has a completely alternate cover. And I haven't opened this yet. I don't know if I will. I kind of want to. I mean, I'm never going to get rid of it. It's mine forever. But it's an embossed kind of picture on the front. And there's a band photo on the inside. But I thought this was just a cool cover. I saw it at Target once. <laughs> I walked in the store. They had it sitting there. 
I came back the next day to pick up something else, and I was like, oh, maybe let's pop over there and see if there's any more. They were all gone. There was only about three or four there at the time. So it was one of those things where I was like, I'm glad I got it, because you're just not going to see these things anymore. These Target exclusives are becoming, like, gold. But here's the back cover. So yeah, I'm going to open it at some point. Maybe I'll do a video for it down the line. So that's it. I was really impressed by this record. I like hearing them do different things, but still sounding like Foo Fighters at the same time. So it's not a complete departure from their sound, but it's nice to have them shake it up. And for me, I think it's more of a groovier album than a party album. But, you know, that's just me, so. There you go, you got your options. You can buy the indie exclusive one, which is blue. They have a standard black one as well out there. And the, the uh, Target version, if you can find it at this point. So that's it. I'm gonna give this thing easily an eight out of 10. I absolutely love it. It's a heck of a lot of fun. It's uh, a nice short and sweet album, around 37 minutes. You can't go wrong. There's not a bad song on it. It's a lot of fun. So that's it. It's going to be great to hear them do these songs live at some point. My name is Giggins. This has been the Foo Fighters with Medicine at Midnight. Pick your poison. And let me know what you guys think of this album in the comments below. And I'll see you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.